Hey guys, Ben Pearson, The Roaster Tracker, and we've had something that we have not had happen for a very, very long time. Uh, as most of you probably know, the big thing that I became famous for was tracking Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster. Uh, the initial prediction of it, the website that launched the day after, I actually made my own predictions. But ever since then, those of you who study this a little bit more will know that I used the JPL Horizons, which JPL has a whole group that's devoted to tracking small objects in space. They also will provide tracking data for spacecraft for a couple of different reasons, one of which we'll get into soon. These are not absolutely be the best predictions of where everything is, but it's quite good and it's good enough for informal purposes. But if you're actually wanting to send a spacecraft there, they don't suggest you actually use this data, that you contact them for more accurate data. But that's what I use on Where is Roadster. And for most of the lifetime, they've had 10 solutions of where it has been. And we've used solution number 10, the most up-to-date one that relies on about 264, I believe, different observations that had been made, starting from the initial one that SpaceX provided. It had been tracked up until March 9th of 2018. So for about one month after they were able to observe it. And then we haven't had any direct observations ever since that date. Uh, the last few were done using some fairly large telescopes that were kind of proving themselves out that they could go find this. Theoretically, if you took the world's best telescopes and you pointed them at the Tesla Roadster, you might be able to track it, but you'd have to spend an enormous amount of time and therefore money to do something that wouldn't really provide a whole lot of value. But anyways, they were able to predict this and they have these predictions that go out for a long, long time. There was a solution recently that was released, solution number 11. Now, let's talk about this. There are a number of sky surveys that will go out there and take a look at different data and you know they'll they catalog some objects, but they don't have enough data in and of themselves to figure out you know if there is asteroids. So there was an amateur astronomer, which is a very common thing, who took the data that had been provided by these surveys and started looking to see if there was any asteroids that had been missed. And he found a very curious one that uh, had been given a designation in 2018 using data from 2018 that it appeared to be quite close to Earth at that point in time, which is really, really cool. Well, this was submitted, as it should be, to the Minor uh, Planet Database, who went and tracked it, and within less than 24 hours, they took this data that came from an amateur and said, hey, this is actually a different object. It is Elon Musk's Tesla Roadster that he launched into space. And so it's been in the news quite a bit, and quite frankly, my website is very happy when people do this. But the truth is, is this was all using old data, and if we were going to really truly refine the trajectory, we would need something that's newer data. The data was from February 8th, it was launched on February 6th, remember, it's February 8th until February 18th, so 10 days worth of data, and it was a 10 day period of time that we already had a fair bit of data for anyways. So I started to look at the data that came from this and see how different is it actually. And the truth is, is it's not that different. Um, the easiest way I have to do this is to look at the close approach table. So they provide predictions that go out to 2090. And at that point in time, they consider them not accurate enough to really propagate forward. Although. There's no reason you couldn't, and I have done this before with some tests. It's possible to do this. But there are a number of close approaches, including the flyby of the moon. Flyby I used loosely. It kind of flew out in the direction of the moon when it left Earth. And from then on, you know, we had the flyby of Mars that happened in 2020. And there are a number of flybys that are predicted to happen, which some of which we have a good chance of being able to observe it again. Now, I took a look at this. The next flyby that's gonna happen is in 2035. The time is quite minuscule. It's a matter of a few minutes difference in the closest approach time. 
That does have some kind of a difference, but we're talking about a 1% distance of the closest approach. It's really pretty insignificant, this update. But <clears throat> scientists are always trying to get the best data, and more data is always better than less data. So having this more data, they can better be able to understand the nonlinear properties. See, when you have a small object that's going in space, it doesn't, strictly speaking, just obey the force of gravity. There is a number of forces mostly coming from the sun that will change it. Specifically, you have the reflection from sunlight and you have the heat that is being generated from that sunlight that will push it into slightly different orbits depending on how it's rotating. It's a little bit complicated, but there, there are some factors that are taken into account these nonlinear terms. And they were better able to understand these nonlinear terms and characterize the orbit just a little tiny, tiny bit better. But because they didn't have anything beyond the data range that they already had, this isn't really that big of a leap. What is very interesting, if you go look at some of the older surveys, there is a famous article that predicted the chance that the Tesla Roadster would hit in Earth. And it actually had some different close approach days because they didn't have some of these later flybys to be able to, to do it, these later observations. Well, now that we have all of this data, unless we were to get something after the last date that we received it, which was March 10th, 2018, then we're not really going to learn a lot more about where it's going to go and what the long-term history will be. Hopefully, it's going to fly by Earth in 2047, uh, in January, and hopefully then we'll be able to observe it for enough time to be able to you know, accurately predict where it's going to be for the long-term future. That will be years and years worth of data, which will dramatically increase the arc, and we'll be able to understand much, much better what its behavior is and be able to uh, predict it out for the long-term future. There's also a flyby on Mars in 2035, as previously mentioned, that if somehow we're able to track that, then it would be quite useful, although you know, we don't really have a telescope that is designed to track this kind of object in orbit around Mars. I talked once upon a time with a old colleague of these. I used to work with the highest, highest resolution camera that's in Mars orbit, the high-rise camera. I talked to a person who works with that camera and they said, yeah, we can't actually track something like that, even if the spacecraft is still working in 2035. Still a cool thought experiment, but it's just not really possible with what we have out there now. Now, 2035 is still 10 years away. Maybe there will be something interesting there that could do such a thing by that point in time, but who knows? Anywho, just wanted to get this out there. This is a known thing. This is a very, very common thing. This wasn't a failure of science. This was an amateur astronomer who took and found something that looked novel. He submitted it to the database and they found out very, very quickly that it was in fact Elon Musk Tesla Roadster. So, this kind of stuff has benefits though, because they were able to do this, they were able to take the arc and extend it a little bit further, which might help them to better track it when it does come into the field of view again, and these later observations. And this kind of stuff is done all the time for asteroids. Asteroids are all the time, you know, new observations are made that they think it's a new thing and it's not. And this happens with spacecraft too. We've uh, thought the Rosetta spacecraft was an asteroid at one point in time. Many, many spacecraft have a minor planet number that was revoked because it turns out they were spacecraft. Anywho, thank you guys so much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. I appreciate everything you do. Until next time, people are tracking. Take care. We will see you then. Bye-bye.